Hey you guys, Lauren King from Mission Working Dogs reached out to me and asked me if I would be willing to donate one of my cutting boards for their upcoming silent auction. Well, of course I said yes, and I made two cutting boards here. This is what we'll be making in this video. I'm gonna show you exactly how I made this super, super cool looking cutting boards. This is one of them, and this is made all from walnut. No other woods, only walnut. Not only that these patterns are all natural and uh, one of a kind, you will never find a board with this pattern in this world. Nobody can reproduce it because this pattern, it's made by nature. It is the sap into the walnut and I book matched it. And then this one over here, this is a flaming birch and walnut cutting board. The same deal, just different approach to end grain cutting boards nice looking cutting boards and like i said i will be giving lauren the option of choosing which one of these two cutting boards she wants and um, the one that she does not want is going to end up on my website so it's available for um, if you want to purchase one if you like this kind of cutting boards i have many of them already in my store at www.skylarewing.store so please go check it out one way to support the channel is to purchase something that I made. So this is what we'll be doing today. Let's get right into it. For the walnut cutting board, I'll be using these sappy wood boards. And these guys, they are three quarter inch thick, two inches wide, 24 inches long. Uh, you can definitely mill your own lumber and get them to these dimensions. I purchased mine on Amazon. And the reason why is because if I just purchased uh, walnut from let's say Bell Forest Woodworker Source or from my local hardwood store, they usually don't have a lot of sapwood. Um, I have good luck with uh, Home Depot when I order from them. Sometimes it has a lot of sapwood, sometimes it's all sapwood, and sometimes has no sapwood. So I found a good reliable source on Amazon and when I purchased it, every single board has sapwood, something like this. And sapwood, it's not really great when you're making furniture and so on, but for cutting boards, it's worth its weight in gold. It is really, really nice for cutting boards. And I'm gonna show you my stash over there. I have lots of lots of uh, pieces that I bought and I have boxes and boxes of them and I keep them because I just love making this kind of organic patterns. You know, you could be cutting triangles with maple and make this diamond shape, but when you have this organic pattern, not only that it looks really nice and organic, but also it's a one of a kind board. You cannot replicate this. So what am I looking for on these boards when I choose which boards to use? Well, if I just look at this board, for example, on this side, it looks all sappy. It doesn't look so great. If I look on this side, it also doesn't look so great. If I look on the edge grain, nothing special. But remember, we are making an end grain cutting board. So if we look on the end of the board, you have this diagonal line where the sap meets the hardwood. And if I take two boards that have kind of the similar pattern, now we have a half of a diamond. And then and after the glue up, when we cut it out next, if we, you know, it's gonna be sliced this way and then we book match it, we should end up with nice diamonds. Now, sometimes you will have boards that the sap doesn't go all the way to the end. So then your design kind of stop around there. So I tend to use those mostly on the outside of my board. I keep the ones that are really nice like this one. You can see it will make that half diamond on that side and then also on the end. These ones, I will keep them to put them smack center of my cutting board. So that way they will be the center of attention. Uh, I already chose some boards here, so let's see. For my centerpiece, I chose, I marked them so I see them. I marked this one, this is going to be my center board, and the same thing, it has it over there. That's the pattern. So that is going to be my center board, and then because I'm gonna book match the whole design, let me bring it in closer. All right, so I hope you can see. 
because I am going to book match the whole thing, I have to work on twos. So this is my very center. Then the next one, it's another one that is going to be a really nice, not quite full diamond, but still really nice and bright. So that's my next pair onto that side. I chose another one for this other side. You see, that's what the end grain looks like. So this is the center, this guy's going on the sides. And then I put two more pairs on each side. I really want to work on pairs and have add numbers. That way I make sure that my good one ends up in the center. So that is going to be my pattern. Also, when I look uh, from the side view, I'm just going to pick up a few boards to show you. You see most of my sap, it's on the bottom. So all of them will be the same way because if I put this in the bottom, but then this one will be on the top, then it's just not gonna look all, you know, really beautiful on one side. It's gonna be mixed back and front. And my boards are going to have a definitive top and bottom because I'll be putting a heavy chamfer. So it's not, you can't use it on both sides. Well, I mean, you could. So this is going to be my board and I'm not gonna glue them edge to edge like this. I'm going to glue them like this. And that is going to make my glue up a lot faster and easier. And then this is two inches thick. So when we will cut them, we will cut them to one and three quarters. So we'll end up with, from these boards, we'll end up with one really giant board or we will end up with two smaller boards. I really wish that was a little bit wider, but I can't stick two more on each side because then it will be too wide. So this is what we will have for this one. Now for the next board, let me show you really quick. The next board we will do completely different. And this is what the pattern is going to be for this one. I am using this uh, flame, flaming birch. So those are going to be on the sides. This one is, I numbered it somewhere. That one is that one, that one, and that one. And this ones, I'm to, going to glue them like this on the side. And when I designed this one, when I came up with this design, I based it all on this really, really beautiful flaming birch. Now this one looks beautiful as it is, but if you look here on the end, let me lift up the camera a little bit. When you look, when you look here in the end, you will see this uh, curve into you know the way the rings on the tree grows. So this board used to be a lot wider. You also used to have this these two strips, and then a little bit more. So it was a really wide board, but it had this uh, curvature kind of onto the side. So I wanted to be this right in the middle. So what I did, I cut off the side and then I split that one in half. And that's how I ended up with the two smaller boards. And this one, I'm not looking for sap or color really. I'm looking for this curvature. I think this is going to be the you know, main design of this board. This curvature, when we um, book match it, it should form like a O design, like a ring almost. So that is going to be in the middle and then I ended up using two walnuts on the side and then the two pieces that I cut off from this piece that is going to be on the very side. Now I'm not really sure how this is going to look. I hope it will look nice, but we'll see what it looks like. And if it's not nice, well, we will um, repurpose it or figure something else to make it nice. So I'm going to glue these panels. Now for the glue up, I will be using this blue mat. This is a gluing mat, it's from Rockler. It makes it really easy to clean the glue off of it. Once it dries off, you can just peel it off. So that will keep my uh, bench from, you know, not having glue all over it. So I'll be using that for the glue. I'll be using Tide Bond Tree. It's the only glue that I know that is food safe and waterproof. So that's what I will be using. For the clamps, I'll be using these parallel clamps. I really like these clamps. Uh, makes it so easy to work with. In the past, I used to use these uh, clamps from Rockler. And uh, I don't like this one so much. I used to like them for a while, but then 
because of the design I used to put blue tape on it so it protects from glue and then that blue tape it's hard to clean and it has these holes onto here so glue keeps sticking in there and the tapes keep sticking in there and it's just a big mess. So lately I've been using this parallel clamp because you can see the bar it's a lot thinner and it's one solid piece it doesn't have any holes and instead of putting blue tape on it what I discovered that if I just rub it with a little paste wax the glue doesn't stick to it so when you pull out the cutting board it doesn't matter how much glue you use there will be no glue on your clamp so I'll be rubbing some paste wax onto the clamps and then I'll be gluing these guys together I'll put the link of these clamps to in the description below if you're interested. Now to spread the glue, I'll be using this silicone brush. I love it for especially for the wider boards. And then to clean my hands, I'll be using these wet wipes, my favorite wet wipes to use in the shop. They never dry out. Uh, they're really, really nice. So first I am going to wax my clamps. There you go. Now I will put this aside and we're moving to the next glue up. Now I'll be letting this dry until tomorrow and then tomorrow we'll come back and plane them and cut them again and then we can really see the pattern we can create from it. Good morning you guys, it's the next morning and now we need to take the boards out of the clamp and send them through the planer. So let's go do that. Loosen up all the clamps and this is the one that I forgot to put the paste wax on the clamps. But it probably still had a little bit of remnants of paste wax from when I used them before. And you can see there's really no glue on the clamps. They are coming right out. And that trick seems to work every time. Now, if you care about your tools and you want to prolong the life of your planer blades, you would use a paint scraper like this to remove the dry glue. So you will just scrape and scrape all that glue off. However, I am not going to do that just because I already have to, I have to change the blades on my planer. Uh, one of them is chipped, so I don't really care so much. I'm going to change them anyway, so I'm just going to run them like this with the glue and flatten them on both sides. All right, you guys, our boards are planed. And let me just show you. This is what they look like so far. And now it's time to cut it into strips. I'll be cutting them at uh, one and three quarters. And that's because in the end, after all the sanding and everything, I want to end up with one and a half. So I'm going to take them to the table saw, cut them at one and three quarter inch.
Well, if you're wondering why my table saw was creating so much dust, that's because I forgot to turn on my dust collector. Sometimes that happens. So let's see what we got here. I'm gonna point the camera downwards. Let me get you a little bit closer. Let's see. I hope you can see from there. So this is the two planks. And let's see what our board is going to look like. I'm going to flip this like this, and then the other one the opposite way. And you see how we book match these guys? We get these diamond patterns. So then flip it this way, flip it the opposite way. To the right, to the left. I'm lucky, I'm liking what I see so far. Uh, let's see, this one goes like this. This one goes like that. To the right, to the left. To the right, to the left. Now, this is a really long cutting board. So, um, might be too long. I don't wanna have to pay too much on shipping for this. So, let's put it aside for now. Let's see what we get with this other one. This other one, I don't know if you can see. There you go. Let's do the same thing. To the right, to the left. And I'm not sure I'm liking that. I think I'm gonna do it the other way. I'm gonna do this one to the left, this one to the right. There you go. Now we get that O in the middle. These guys are going the opposite direction, but that's okay. So to the left, to the right. To the left, to the right. Left. Right. I think that is going to be nice. Go left to the right. So this one, happy with the way it is. This one is just a little bit, a little bit large. So this one, it's a little bit too large. So I think I'm gonna take away two pieces from it. So which one do I wanna take off? Do I wanna just leave this part? Or do I wanna take this part? Which one, which one? This one is kind of missing this top portion. So I might leave that one and take these guys away. Now those guys are not scrap. I will be making um, another cutting board and mix those in. Now, when I cut them at the table saw, it frayed a little bit of the edges. In order to get a better glue up, I'm gonna take these guys through the drum sander and sand the edges that will be glued just to get a better glue up. So I will be doing that. I'll use 80 grit sandpaper on my drum sander and we'll sand all these pieces and then we'll glue them together. All right, you guys, so I took this through the drum sander and when I was sanding it, I noticed that this one board has a little imperfection in there. So I think I'm not going to use that one. Because I'm not using that one, I have to take its pair that makes that circles design. I have to take both of them out of the game. So those guys are going on the side and this is going to be our cutting board shape. So now it's time to glue them all back up. Well, our panels are uh, glued up and I also quickly glue up another panel, one of those uh, sappy walnuts. That way those extra pieces that I have, remember I took four pieces out because the board was too large. 
I will mail it to the new board and make two extra boards. So I guess one of those glue ups of the 24 inches sappy wood will make one and a half boards if you make it at this dimension. So this is my glue ups over here. So this is the new glue up of the walnut sappy board that I just did. And then here is our other two. And I'm gonna let those dry until tomorrow and then tomorrow we'll come and send them, shape them, finish them and see what we have. Hey you guys, here we are the next morning and uh, I already took the boards out of the clamp and I ran them through the drum sander all the way from 80 grid to 180. And uh, the boards are looking beautiful. This is the walnut sappy one. This is what it looks like so far. And we will add some heavy chamfer on it and finish it. Um, the other one that we did with walnut and uh, flame birch, it looks like this. And you see those semicircles that end up kind of like this uh, oval shape in the middle. Now I'll have to admit to you guys, uh, last night when I came in the shop to check on my boards, I realized that I wasn't paying attention and when I glue up the strips, I didn't have a straight line here where the walnut meets the um, uh, flame birch. It was kind of like zigzagging, one wasn't that way, one that way, one that way. So what I did, I just took it to the table saw and I cut it again. I cut off those parts that was like zigzagging and then I glue it back together and now we have perfectly straight lines. So I fixed that part. For this one, I already added the heavy chamfer and let me bring you to the table. I'll show you a couple of things here before we add the chamfer. All right, I hope you can see here. So the reason I like adding a chamfer versus a roundover, well, one, I think it's a more of a more modern look than, you know, roundovers are kind of old style. So you see it gives it the shadow line. Also, it makes it look so much thinner, even though it's a thick, heavy board. And the chamfer also allows you to hold it with your fingers. You stick your fingers right there under, makes it easy to pick up. So that's why I like putting a heavy chamfer on the bottom and a tiny chamfer on the top, just for aesthetics. So I already done the chamfers on this one, but we will do the walnut board and I'll show you how I do the chamfers. Now remember, when we cut the strips for this board, we had uh, two extra pairs. So four strips of a board extra because the board was too large. Well, I used those onto this board over here. I glue up two more boards and those are the two panels that came extra from this board. You can see it's these parts over here. So I put them on the center here and then I put some more sappy wood on the sides and made an extra board. And because, you know, while I was there and I was gluing up panels, I made one more. <laughs> So those will go on my website, but I will not finish those today. Today we'll just finish the two that we started. So let's go to the table saw and do the heavy chamfers. By the way, you guys, while I mill this and sand it and stuff, I made sure that my boards are completely flat. There's no twist, no cup, there's no wiggle, and this board is totally flat. And I checked that against my cast iron table saw table. I'm going to show you just like that. And what I will be doing is I will be cutting the heavy chamfers on the bottom first. So it's going to go somewhere around there. And then after I make the cut, I'll look at it. And if I feel like it's not um, enough, I'm going to move the fence a little bit closer and I'm going to adjust it and then do all around. And after I do all those chamfers, I will flip it over and I'll do the tiny chamfer for the top. So that's what I'm going to do now. Our chamfer is done and this is what is looking like. Heavy chamfer on the bottom. Make sure you're meeting exactly at the corners. And then I have a tiny chamfer on the top. And I think that looks amazing. 
Now it's time to sand it. I am going to sand this board. I already, like I said, I ran into the drum sander um, from 80 all the way to 180. And now I'm gonna sand it. Well, the sides where we put the chamfers and stuff, I'll have to sand it um, all the way to 220. I'll start with 120 and go through every grid. And then for the top, I'll just do the 220. So I'm gonna do that now. All right, you guys, our boards are all sanded all the way to 220, and now it's time to raise the grain. To raise the grain, I will be spritzing these boards with water, and I'm gonna do that all around, get them all wet, and then let them dry. If you don't do this, the first time you wash your cutting board, it will become rough to the touch, and we don't want that. So we wanna raise the grain, and then go back with 220 and knock it down, so we have a very smooth cutting board. So you will see when I put the water on these cutting boards, that's when you really see the pattern popping up. And I just love this process. So make sure you get the edges, you get the back. We wanna raise the grain everywhere. And this one looks very pretty as well. So we'll let it dry and then we'll send it again with 220 and then we're ready to put a finish. So we raised the grain with water and then we knocked it back down sending it with 220. My boards are ready for finish. For the finish, I'll be using this Walrus Oil Cutting Board Finish. I love this, it's really, really good stuff. So that's what I'll be using. And after this oil, I'll be using a wax. And I'll tell you more about the wax when it comes to that. So let's put this oil on right now. Now, because these guys are end grain cutting board, they are going to soak in a ton of oil. So I'm just gonna pour it just like that on my cutting board. And then I'll use one of these white um, pads, this, not scratching pads and I'll work it in. Now, some people like to bait their cutting boards. They put them in a bin with oil and let it sit there for a while. I don't like doing that. I feel like what happens is it absorbs so much oil and then it keeps leaking out for days. I don't like that. So I'm gonna work it my way. Look at the beautiful colors coming out once we put this oil on. Now it's time to put on the wax. For the wax, I'll be using my own wax that I made in my kitchen. And the uh, idea of using a wax is does a few things. One, it makes it really, really nice to the touch, like very smooth and soft. Two, it will lock in the mineral oil into the board so the finish will last for longer, so you need to reapply a lot less often. And number three is just an extra layer of protection. So I'm gonna use the same pad and rub it in. And this is what you would use every you know few weeks or so. Put a thin layer of this butter board to protect your cutting board and to make it feel really nice. So to apply it, super, super easy. You just put a small amount all over. Rub it in. And then you take a t-shirt material, clean, dry, and buff it out. And this is also gonna give it a little bit of that satin sheen. 
it's gonna make it really really nice and luxurious looking and this is it this is our cutting boards look at that beautiful beautiful natural patterns beautiful rich tones super happy with the way they turn out